My dear friends, welcome to this Mass of Monday of the 12th week in Ordinary Time. This Mass is going to be offered for all of you. And we pray for your families. Pray for the concerns you bring to God today, for yourself, and for everyone that is dear to you. We continue to pray for our sick, especially those in critical care from this virus, that God may help them recover and return home to their normal duties. Pray for those who have been impacted negatively by this bad situation, those who have lost their jobs, those whose businesses have been closed, that God may help them think anew in this situation. I would also like to pray for those who have birthdays or anniversaries today. May God watch over and grant you many more years to celebrate. Let us rise and sing the table of plenty, the song, the table of plenty. Come to the feast of heaven on earth. Come to the table of plenty. God will provide for all that we need. Here on the table of plenty. Oh, come and sit at my table, where saints and sinners are friends. I wait to welcome the lost and lonely to share the cup of my love. Come to the feast of heaven on earth, come to the table of plenty. God will provide for all that we need here at the table of plenty. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear friends, to prepare ourselves for this Mass, let us call to mind our sins and ask God's mercy and forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners to repentance, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May He forgive us our sins. May He bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may always revere and love your holy name. For you never deprive of your guidance those you set firm on the foundation of your love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Kings. Shall Manasseh, king of Assyria, occupy the whole land and attack Samaria, which he besieged for three years? In the ninth year of Hosea, king of Israel, the king of Assyria took Samaria and deported the children of Israel to Assyria, Settling them in Hala, at the Habor, a river of Gozan, and the cities of the Medes. This came about because the children of Israel sinned against the Lord their God, who had brought them up from the land of Egypt, from under the domination of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and because they venerated other gods. They followed the rights of the nations, whom the Lord had cleared out of the way of the children of Israel, and the kings of Israel, whom they set up. And though the Lord warned Israel and Judah by every prophet and seer, give up your evil ways and keep my commandments and statutes in accordance with the entire law which I enjoined on your fathers and which I sent you by my servants, the prophets, they did not listen, but were as stiff-necked as their fathers who had not believed in the Lord their God. They rejected his statutes, the covenant which he had made with their fathers, and the warnings which he had given them, till, in his great anger against Israel, the Lord put them away out of his sight. Only the tribe of Judah was left. 
the word of the Lord. Mm, Thanks be to God. Help us with your right hand, O Lord, and answer us. Help, Help us, us with your right, your right hand, hand, O Lord, Lord and answer us. O God, you have rejected us and broken our defenses. You have been angry. Rally us. Help us with your right hand, O Lord, and answer us. You have rocked the country and split it open. Repair the cracks in it, for it is tottering. You have made your people feel hardships. You have given us stupefying wine. Help, Help us with your right, right hand, hand, O Lord, and answer us. Have not you, O God, rejected us, so that you go not forth, O God, with your armies? Give us aid against the foe, for worthless is the help of men. Help us with your right hand, O Lord, and answer us. Alleluia! sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Stop judging that you may not be judged. For as you judge, so will you be judged. And the measure with which you measure we will measure out to you. Why do you notice a splinter in your brother's eye, but do not perceive the wooden beam in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, let me remove the splinter from your eye, while the wooden beam is in your own eye? You hypocrite. Remove the wooden beam from your eye first. Then you will see clearly to remove the splinter from your brother's eye. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, I will reflect with you this afternoon from the Gospel reading. I think for some of us, spending time and talking about others is our pastime. It's something we do or almost like when we have nothing else to do, even though there's so much to do in, in, in our lives. And we invest the, the, the amount of intensity and seriousness we invest when taking down others, if we invested that amount of, or that intensity and seriousness in other things, I think we will all be superstars in the things we do. And today, the Lord is calling us to re-examine that kind of engagement with others. We will not stop judging others. Judgment is part of how our intellect works. So that's not what God is talking about. He is not asking for us not to be able to judge right from wrong, good from bad, darkness from light, right from left, one person from another. That is just what we do. Before you buy anything, you make a judgment. Before you choose one route from another one, you make a judgment which is going to be faster, 
you use all kinds of metrics to make what judgment before you do anything you do. So judgment is part of how our brain, our brains work. But the judgment referred here is what I consider a takedown. A takedown that is done out of malice. A takedown that is done out of bad will. And, and how often do we spend our time, our resources, doing that with each other? Now, correcting someone or calling someone out for something they are doing wrong, especially when done out of charity, it's a good thing. So that's not what the Lord is referring here. In case you say, you know what? Yeah, I can't even call them out. I cannot even confront them. You know, even this is appropriate. I cannot even do it because that would mean I'm judging them. This is not what the Lord is saying. Appropriate confrontation is correct. It's charitable. Where I'm doing it for your good. To help you see what you're not seeing. Because all of us do have blind spots. Things we cannot see at this level. And if you are calling my attention to something that I cannot see, and you're doing it to help me be better, that's right, that's welcome. That accrues credit for you. Because ultimately, you're doing it for my good. So that's different. So if you see me doing something, don't think, well, you know what? I don't want to do it in case Father thinks I'm judging him. No. You be my other eye, helping me see what I cannot see. At this level. That way, I'm better able to improve myself, better able to serve. But if you don't do that, and you choose to take me down, or take someone down, where you don't even speak to the person, and even if you speak to them, you're doing it just so that others may see what a terrible person this guy is. That's a takedown. That's what the Lord is talking about. And how often do we do that? Gossiping. See, take down. I've heard any, any number of people who have told me, well, I don't kill no one. I have never done anything really, really wrong. I said, really? That, that's not true. Because even in civil law, assassination of character, it's a killing of one's character. And how often do we kill people's character? For bad intent. Only because maybe there's something we we envious or jealous about. Or something that we just don't want them to have a good name. Even though they have earned or worked for it. So, so the next time you say to yourself, I'm not a murderer, I'm not bad. Think about the many times you have killed someone's character. You have killed someone's image or someone's good name. That's what the Lord is speaking about here. It says, if I take down someone or destroy someone's good name with malice in my heart, my good name will be taken down with malice also. If you do it, the same will happen to you. Those are not my words. This is what the Bible said. Stop judging. Stop judging. That you may not be judged. And towards the end, he says, First, remove the beam, the wooden beam in your own eye. The wooden beam, that's a big, it's a big stuff, right? In your own eye. So I should first of all focus on myself. Be honest with myself. Because if I if all I do is about the other person, I'm going to make myself feel like I'm better. Than them. You can only judge someone you're better off than. You cannot judge someone who is better than you. So, so judgment means it shows arrogance on my part. When I judge you, I'm acting arrogantly, putting myself in a better place, moral moral uh, uh, position than you are, or spiritual position than you are, and saying you are not as good as I am. You should do better. That's what judgment does. And unfortunately, you could never tell if you're better than myself. Only God can tell that. Only God knows his cause. No one else has. And so when we do that, we condemn ourselves right there. Because all we are saying to God, 
God, I'm better than this person. I mean, while well, you are not. So in trying to judge the other, you condemn yourself or I condemn myself. Because by the same standard, God judges me and realizes a kettle or a pot, calling a kettle black because, yeah, you may be the pot. Another person is a kettle. But more than just that, the reason why judgment is not okay, God has not blessed us equally. Believe me. The Bible has that. For some of us, God gave us one talent. So he knows what he gave us. So he's judging us by one talent, by the value of one talent. For some, he gave two talents. He's going to judge you based on the value of two talents. For others, he gave five talents. Blessed are they who got five. He's going to judge you on five. Could you imagine if I got five talents and all I'm looking at, looking at this brother or this sister who only got one talent and is doing every best to do the most with their one talent and I'm judging myself based on their input or their output. Could you imagine where all of us are going to end up? I'll be so surprised on the last day when God says to them, come on, my faithful servant. You just got one talent and you made an outstanding profit with your one talent. Like what? I think better than this guy. And God says, no, she just got one talent. You got five. So at all times, we must focus on what God has given to us and see how best we can make the most of it. Instead of spending all our time and thinking about what someone didn't do right, what they have not done wrong, what they have, what they have done wrong, how they are not good enough. I think that's exactly what the Lord is saying here to us. So this is an important um, moment of uh, self-evaluation, self-reckoning, that we, we watch ourselves. We watch how we treat and talk about others. We watch what we do for ourselves and with ourselves and what God has given us. And so my dear friends, we pray that God may help us. The introspection is good where I honestly look into myself more than I look into others. May God help us and open our eyes and open our minds that we are able to scrutinize ourselves more and focus on ourselves and do better for ourselves just so we're able to encourage and help others charitably. So always I like to end my reflections by reminding you that you are still the delight of the Almighty God. God loves you very much. Let us pray. Most merciful God, what an outstanding God you are, and an amazing God. Scripture tells us if you judge us by our offenses, none of us would survive. In your compassion and in your mercy, you cleanse us every day. You renew us every day just so we can stand before you. For the times we have violated the good names of others. For the times we have put down, taken down people's good character. We ask, oh God, that you forgive us. Help us, dear God, to take good count of the efforts that others made. And act with charity towards all peoples. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for a more tolerant Pray for a more hospitable, pray for a more accommodating world. That as Christians, as believers, modeled after the pattern of Christ, we may love everyone, we may help and heal everyone, we may build better spaces of trust among peoples. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the Spirit of God to help us sanitize our thoughts, sanitize our words, sanitize our actions. So that what we think, what we say, and what we do will only help to build God's family and not tear it down. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for your needs and pray for the needs of people in your families. All those who have 
ask for God's prayers, God's blessings at this time. Pray especially for people who are sick. Pray for those in jail. Pray for children without parents. Pray for children with physical or mental disabilities. Pray for parents who care for them. That God may grant them enough grace to manage their difficult situations. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Pray for those who have anniversaries, birthdays or weddings or other anniversaries today. That God may grant them many more healthy and joyful years to celebrate in the future. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us ask our blessed mother to intercede for us as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Blessed I Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made to become our bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. forever. Blessed I Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruits of the vine and work of human hands become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my beloved sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice that we have for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Amen. Receive, O Lord, the sacrifice of consolation and praise, and grant that cleansed by its actions we may make offering of a heart pleasing to you. We ask this. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Amen. your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with all the angels and saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we are claimed. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of hosts, hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore this gift, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, the Lord Jesus took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, the Lord took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. With the first acclamation, let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. We proclaim we your death, Lord. Lord. And profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate 
the memorial of his death and resurrection. We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and this chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have felt us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Timothy our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have placed you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us rise and pray in the words our Lord gave us. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we are with the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, we said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with Amen. you all. Yes. And with your spirit. Dear friends, let us offer each other the sign of that peace. Peace be with you. And for those who are watching us and joining us from your hospital beds and hospital rooms and around the world, may God's peace rest and abide with you always. Lamb of God, we take away the, the sins, sins of the world. world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, we take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, we take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Look up, my sisters and brothers, look up and behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my room. But I want to say the word, and my soul shall be. This moment of spiritual communion for all those who are unable to still participate in this Eucharist. Let us pray for the grace of spiritual communion. Most merciful, most compassionate, ever forgiving God. Today we call on your mercy to be stretched forth across this universe to all your children who are still unable to attend Mass and receive your body and your blood. May the desires of your hearts be nourished by the spiritual benefits of this sacrament. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Let us pray. Renewed and nourished by the sacred body and precious blood of your Son, we ask of your mercy, O Lord, that what we celebrate with constant devotion may be our sure pledge of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us say the prayer to Saint Michael. Saint Michael, Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and sinners of the devil. May God rebuke him and be prayed. And to thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell, Satan and all the evil spirits that prowl throughout the world, seeking the ruins of souls. Amen. Before the final blessing, I'd like to take a moment to express my thanks to you for joining us at this Mass and also let you know that um, based on Montgomery County regulations and our command here, we're able to have maximum of 10 people for now. So um, if you know someone else who might like to attend Mass, we can take at least 10 people for now. And hopefully when we move back to Clark, where the space is bigger, we will take more. But for now, we can take 10. So if you see someone who doesn't know about that, please just let them know. It's always, if you forget everything I said today, don't forget that you are still the delight of Almighty God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Through the prayers of St. Michael and our blessed mother, may God bless and keep you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Dear friends, this Mass is ended. We go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have an amazing day. Thank you. We're seeing amazing grace. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved him wretch like me. Please.